Hey there, AGA members. Chris Garlock here with Michael Redmond. Today, we're going to look at the 31st game in the AlphaGo self-play series. But first, as usual, we want to give a big shout out to all of our AGA members. Thank you. The support of our AGA members is what makes these videos possible. And if you'd like to help, and I know you do, the best way, head over to usgo.org and become an AGA member. You get a cool card and lots of other great stuff. And you'll be supporting, as I said, these videos and, of course, all the other wonderful things the AGA does. So thanks for that. All right, Michael, 31, just uh, just plowing along here. Are you, are you holding up all right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I got some in the bank, so I'm ready. All right, cool. All right, what's the uh, what's this top-line story for game 31? What's, uh, what's going on there? Okay, well, Black's going to play the Chinese opening. And the Chinese opening was a, a very popular opening before AlphaGo. Yeah. And there's this move that AlphaGo played with White that um, that changed that all. And it's not such a popular opening now. So we're going to see that move in this game. Okay. Yeah. And so that's that's, that's maybe the highlight. And that's after it. that, that's we it. just get to see Black <laughs> doing the neat attacks and White sort of ignoring them. And so that's that's <laughs> that's just business as usual, I think. All right. So let's get into the game. Let's get into the game. Um, so it's the Chinese opening. Um, yeah. The low Chinese opening, as it was sometimes called. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, this is a point where um, people sometimes in a position like this will kick at B. Um, or, of course, answering simply at A is the move that used to be played. Right. Um, so both of those are possibilities. Um I could go into a variation, yeah. I guess. Why don't, uh, why don't I make a variation for that? Um, the idea behind this move is to make white heavy, which is something that um, go playing computers, programs, AIs, as we call them, they really like to do that. They like to make the opponent heavy. Um, and white's going to play some kind of extension on the side, probably. Like, um, uh, this would be a common move now. Or, or white could play... If white plays high, it's um, popular to jump in here immediately. Mm. So that's how, in modern Go, that's how it's developing. Otherwise, white could play uh, something closer to the corner, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, but white's probably expected to play something on the upper side, after which, of course, a computer program would be diving into the 3-3 point here. Um, so that's something I might not be doing, but it's, it's, it's the fad. So that's the idea behind this, because if black instead plays this way, and say white plays something elsewhere, then this is not always going to be forcing. Like we've mm -hmm. seen, even in this series of AlphaGo versus AlphaGo games, we've seen white jumping into the 3-3 point in a, in a similar position. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is, um, there's a lot more flexibility that white has when black has not played the kick. Okay. And, and of course, also, it, it does uh, make a, a real difference to the, the corner, because now invading the corner is less, uh, less important, less big. It's not as big as it would be in this case, where white could um, feasibly invade the corner immediately. Even. Sure. Like, that would be a big move. Whereas when black has played the kick here, it becomes smaller to invade the corner. Right. Got it. So that's the idea. But in this game, uh, AlphaGo just plays away. Um, and we get this position. It's a standard Joseki nowadays. Um, and white jumps in, too. Uh, so I guess that makes it even. Sure, I like it. And this is actually when white has played a Kakari and black has played away, like in the upper right corner, um, and white jumps into the corner now. This is where it can branch out because, of course, white can play, can play this way, simple connection. Uh, or white can play the push that was played in the game. This is the more, you might say, it's the more aggressive move. Mm -hmm. It leaves a hole, leaves a hole. But for the time being, if black pushes through here, I actually made this variation already. So let's just go through it. Black can play this way to... Um, Black actually has two sides to cut, but white's going to mm -hmm. capture the cutting stone. That's um, that's the go proverb, actually. It's, the, it's what people say. White's going to capture the ghost, the cutting stone. And this is actually not so good for black. White has this forcing move here, which will force black to add a stone. <coughs> um, <coughs> it's considered to be playable for white, especially when white has a big, a wide side there on the upper side. It's so over concentrated for black, right? So, yeah, um, almost always. Well, now this is going to change as the game develops. Um, and sometimes it's going to be okay if the value of the upper side 
reduces or if it becomes a solid territory or something. Later in the game, black might be playing this cut. But mm -hmm. for the time being, it's, um, it's not worth it usually. So black will usually cut this side. And this is actually a variation of the joseki that um, is pretty common. You can see it in professional games. And so if white plays a hane, then um, something like this. Now, it, the last few moves, there's a lot of variants, but this is the variation I would expect. Um, and you see that white has a nice position on the upper side. Black has a lot, a larger moyo on the right side, but there is that weak point at B. Um, and the weak point at B is made, it is more serious because black has filled a, a liberty at A. So the, the mark group there with the, the mark group that has a, a, a triangle on it mm. uh, is, has a, a limit, limited number of liberties, which is going to make a big difference when white plays at B. <laughs> So there's a drawback to pushing through it, is that, is that black um, is losing liberties there. And so in the game, um, it's perfectly normal from the human viewpoint also that black just simply plays the honey here. Right. And when this happens... Yeah, I like it. Um, when this happens, <clears throat> it's um, undecided, but there's that push through and cut. Uh, let's see if I made a variation. Yes. Well, it looks like, it looks like I didn't. But uh, there's that push through at A that is waiting to happen, uh, but it's still too early. So let's just do it. For instance, if black does this, black is still going to get the corner, Same but problem. it's still a bit premature. And, yeah. and this time there's going to be some conflict with the center. So for instance, if white plays here, let's have white play here and then here. Um, there's a ladder that white can escape from because if black takes in the ladder, then there's this problem that happens. This would be a lot to be giving away. White would capture the whole corner. Yeah. Um, otherwise, if black connects here, it's the same story. Uh, it doesn't solve the problem. It's, it's the same thing that happens yeah. to the corner. Yeah, um, crash, crash and burn. Yeah. So um, that's problematic. It, of course, obviously, that's going to change if at some point black gets to capture the stone here. That's going to change mm. everything. Mm. Also, um, if black, let's uh, say, if black pushes through the other way, this way. Um, now, white has a fairly strong position on the left here. So when black does this, and now you can see that the corner has a living shape. Whereas in the other variation, if white had connected on the right, this would not yet be a living shape. So um, theory, at, at the time being, this is still not working for black. But um, there, if black had um, some way to extend the liberties on the upper side just a little bit more, then this would sure. be a very dangerous variation for white. So, um, so this is something that um, usually it's a bit dangerous for white to play this because at this point black would start doing stuff on the upper side. Mm. So, so this is the variation that white, uh, capturing the one stone is the variation that white wants to take. And usually this is not so good for black. Whereas if black plays this way, for the time being, white is strong enough on the left that it's not going to amount to much. So it's just something that black is going to be looking at for a while, but it's not going to, cannot use immediately. Right. And to, to develop from that, one way that black can start preparing to make use of that would be to uh, build a group on the upper side. And then you see that um, black is now uh, have, can have ideas of... Um, one might say have ideas of pushing through um, and cutting here, mm -hmm. D, and then maybe getting something on the outside. Or for instance, um, if white plays something like this, then white has already spent a move to surround the upper right. side. And now, right. now at some point, black would be free to play here and see how white responds. And if white takes here and black takes the corner, then in this case, uh, this white stone would be a bit redundant. Right. Just slightly, but it would be a bit redundant. So there's a lot of nuances there that are affecting the play, but this push through and cut thing is it's it's not going to happen in the near future. It's just something that the players have to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. um, and so black switches. I was showing the variation where black plays in the upper side. This is a big move too, um, yeah. but in the actual game, black just switched. Switched. This is also this is always a big move. Like if you play. If you're one of the players who likes to play these 3-3 uh, three, three invasions that the computers tell you to play, um, then you will often get into this position in the lower left corner um, almost always, in almost any board position, like unless there's something urgent happening elsewhere. 
um, if you can't figure out what to do with the next move, this is always going to be a good move that you can choose because it's taking advantage of uh, the fact that white played away in the middle of a joseki. Mm. And so with, this gives black a perfect position where black has um, this final move black has played. It's not only is it big in territory and it's re uh, taking away white space on the lower side, um, it's a very efficient way of getting rid of the thread and cut here. Um, so it's, it's a very good way of perfecting black's position. And so white just adds that move. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is a very important, as I was saying, coming in here is big for black. So um, just because black has played in the lower left, it doesn't mean it's a good idea for white to protect there. White has to, white has to take the big point just to keep things balanced. So now the upper side is, is starting to look like it could be a white territory. There is still a, an entry point here, which mm -hmm. we're going to see coming into play later. Okay. Um, if black plays here immediately, you can expect that black's going to get attacked fairly severely. Yep. So the timing is always going to be difficult. But for the time being, white has this very big position on the upper side, but while black has an advantage on the rest of the board. So in the opening of the game, it, it, it pays to yeah. sort of cast in on your advantage. Yeah. And again, this is, this is the way that AlphaGo likes to attack these walls. It likes to attack walls. Um, and it likes to have the three space um, the three space distance from the wall. Like I think before AlphaGo, people would tend to play. I would tend to play here. I was going to ask you if that, you know, how AlphaGo had changed the, you know, how to handle that wall. So it's really just that one line difference. The one line difference. Um, the way we thought about it was that the fact that it's open on the side on the second line, mm. uh, White probably doesn't want to start building a little territory here. Is the way we thought about it. And like it, it's so painful for White to be building a territory where it's open on the side. It's going to be hardly any territory. But of course, White's not going to do that immediately. But the fact that White has that option is giving White's wool a bit extra, um, extra strength. So it's, it would be even easier for White to uh, play away. So this is putting, the, the game move is putting more pressure on the White wall. And actually, Black's not worried about an invasion. Like, if, if the fact that Black is further left than we expected sort of indicates that maybe Black should be worried about an invasion. Sure. But when that happens, it's, it's White who's going to get into trouble, like, even if Black plays something like this. Um, this is actually not a computer-generated move, so maybe we could find something different from the computer. <laughs> but um, even when Black plays like this, you can see that White's wall, white, it's White's wall that's going to get attacked. And White's um, getting very so, busy, too, right? Yeah, so, so White um, is liable to get in trouble with a peep here, which could be a serious threat. Um, and at any point, if Black plays somewhere around here, Black has a pretty good shape. Yeah. And so it's, it's White who's getting into trouble here. So um, since black doesn't really have to worry about being attacked on the lower side, maybe it's a good thing that black has it wide. So for instance, if we play uh, play something like this for white, this is the normal way to enter a Chinese opening. And let's have black play this variation. Uh, you can see that um, there's probably no problem with having the lower side very wide in this kind mm. of variation. It's working well for black. And black, again, will be eventually, let's just finish uh, what was originally, this is still a feasible way of playing. It's, it was the Joseki before AlphaGo. And then black could probably continue with something like this. So, um, or, or maybe, or maybe, let's see, maybe something like this. But I think in this position, it's, the side is probably more important. And so you can see that the wide side is not being a problem for black. But white plays here. So this is the move Whoa. that AlphaGo played. Uh, Alpha, yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, this is the move. Uh, it was not a click over. Um, and this basically changed oh the way God. we think about the, the Chinese opening. Because it turns out to be a fairly effective way of attacking the Chinese opening. And the point is that when white plays the more um, conventional approach move here, Okay. White does white does not have a lot of room on on the side. Like for instance, no, even though in no. the variation I was showing where black plays on the left, uh, white barely gets enough room to live. Right, and if right, black right. plays something like this, or if black plays something like this, then white is not going to have a base. Yeah. So um, it's very difficult for white to make a base for this group, and people manage to play it by floating out into the center, right. um, to a certain degree, but. Um, 
what's happening with this move is AlphaGo is trying to make a base. And by attaching the star point, when white is going to play on the right side, white's going to have one extra line. So in the game, black played this way. When this happens, white's going to have, this is the game variation. And if black plays locally this way, uh, white's going to play like this. But you can see that if later, if white plays um, something in this vicinity, one of these two points, white's mm. going to have more space. White's going to have mm. more space on the right side and has the option of making two eyes. Actually, mm. when black plays this way um, from the corner to take away white space, usually white's not going to hurry. But you can see that I think the fact that white does have the option of making a base on the right side uh, makes a big difference. It gives white a more resilient shape. And of course, white has the coal here too. Right. Um, which right. could happen anytime. Once white um, starts this coal, it's very big. So white has to have a good coal threat for it. Um, huh. so, so going back to this one, uh, this was not an original of AlphaGo, actually. It was played before AlphaGo. Well, that's what um, I was going to ask you because it, that's a, the Chinese is something that was studied pretty thoroughly, I thought, right? Yes, there was a player who liked to play this move sometimes. And it was played on and off uh, throughout history against the 3-4 point. But um, it was considered a bit eccentric. And, <laughs> you know, um, basically the local position is bad for white, uh, theoretically. There's a theory that the local position is bad for white when this happens. Um, the plan behind this move, when black plays this way, is for white to play towards the wider side. Right, and so that's that's how white gets out of the problem that white did not have enough room on the right side by playing this way. White gets to switch around to the lower side, so white mm -hmm. gets more room, and black will play this way, and and it turns out like this. But you can see that um, just imagine uh, not having these two stones on the board. That would mm -hmm. be a lot better for white. The fact that this exchange, you might say, is on the board gives black. Um, some pro possibility to uh, look at uh, a lack of liberties in these three stones. So there's a weakness there. Mm -hmm. um, because white, you might say, it didn't happen in that order of moves in this uh, position, but um, the fact that white has played this exchange is filling a liberty. And that's, that's the argument uh, that was saying that this move that white plays here is bad because it can be compared, for instance, to, to white playing a low Kakari. And the player's coming to this position, which mm -hmm. is pointing in the different direction, but it, the shape is exactly the same. Mm -hmm. And this is a position where white would definitely not want to play this exchange, right. because it would fill one of white's liberties. It's just giving black a more solid position. So this exchange is obviously bad. And so people, although it's turned around, um, or even though it's turned around, people would say that um, but this is bad for white, uh, just because white has played that uh, bad exchange, even though it's turned around. But AlphaGo was playing it very happily, and um, the only explanation that can be given, and the explanation that we had even before AlphaGo was that white is heading towards the wider lower side, right. and so it's getting more space. But people still didn't like it before AlphaGo because we thought that that exchange there was bad for white. Uh, so that was the way um, our reasoning was sort of interfering maybe with our judgment. Um, mm. But it, it turns out that this, this, um, in this position, um, the direction of play is very important because white gaining a base on the lower side, um, it weakens the black zone of C. And it, I was so thinking, it takes, yeah. away, uh, takes away yeah. all of the joy that black would have from attacking white's wall on the left because uh, black's in a more defensive position now. And white's pretty much alive on the lower side. So well, this would I, be a success for white. Yeah, no, I feel all of a sudden black is feeling kind of outnumbered in the local fight. Yeah. Um, but so when yeah. black plays here, now you can see already, even just looking at this position, you can see that white has one extra line. Like mm -hmm. even if white were to play something like this, which is not the, uh, it's not the suggested move, but if right. white was to play something like this, you would already see that white ha has a little bit more, more room. Mm -hmm. But instead white plays here. With the idea to get the hanging connection, then play lightly. And, and again, in this position, I was showing you um, some candidate moves for white in the future, uh, the marked points. But also, it's important that white has uh, reduced the value of the lower side. So white's reducing the lower side from the fifth line. 
Um, and that, again, it takes away a lot of the value of Black's potential attack against white in the lower left, because mm -hmm. the fact that there's no expansion that Black can get from the lower side is bad. So that, that's the reason for Black playing this way. Um, and in this position, um, it's a relatively new position. I would say that there, uh, Black has two choices. Uh, one is this move, which I, which I made as a variation, and will end up this way. And the other uh, possibility is the game move, which is, I would call them both Joseki now. They've become popular in professional play. I like that turn. It's very thick. It's a thick move. It's, it's building on the lower side. Mm -hmm. uh, white jumps. And again, um, if black continues here, like if black were to play here, white, um, white would probably just expand here. Or sure. white could play a hanging connection. Um, so white's going to get a base on the right side. Uh, Black's local move actually is to play here, but Black didn't do that quite yet. Mm. I was sort of itching to play this move. I, I don't <laughs> see why AlphaGo didn't play it at some point. Um, this this seals, move will it seals white in. It will seals white in, in. Yeah. Um, and it it attempts to expand the lower side on a large scale. So it, it yeah. will work actually. It will work better after Black plays this move. Mm, mm. So we'll 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 look at it again. Um, so they played this variation. And White's Wall, it looks a bit weak, but um, it does have a potential eye on the lower side. And it's heading towards the friendly stones in the upper left. So it's OK for the time being. So this was the game move. Black continues to attack. And um, this is a very difficult choice between doing that and playing this one. So just to talk about that right now, um, Black's choice to attack on the left side the attack itself, um, in itself, it's not going to be successful. White's, White's strong enough that um, Black White doesn't really have to worry about that group in the lower left. It's not as if it's an immediate danger. So the, the thing, what Black is trying to accomplish here um, is Black is aiming at this move. Black is aiming to get a stone there. And uh, that, again, will have um, an effect on what happens in the upper right there. So there's these two things that are happening um, in connection to Black's attack on White's lower left group. It all has to do with White's moyo on the upper side. So, um, so let, just to get into my variation, I, I would have played here. Yeah, and, it's, it's, um, itching, it's, itching to play there. Right, that's why I said. <laughs> and something like uh, White's tetsuji is to play the attachment here. With this, White will get a, a, a base on the right side. Um, Something like this. Black does get to attack strongly on the lower side. You can see that if Black wins the fight here, it's going to be a very big territory. Of course, White's yeah. going to try. White. I don't know exactly what White's going to do. It's not as if the. I don't think the whole left side is going to turn into Black territory. Um, but I, I don't really know what's going to happen at this point. It looks like it's a fight that Black has a chance to win. Okay. Black is attacking. So I, I would have liked to play this way. But in the game, Black takes a completely different approach. Wow, 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 wow. Whew. And yes, um, white defends the corner. Again, that is the one big white territory. So I guess it's yeah. important. Yeah. And black, um, this is really. Black you know, is thinking a, big, kind of really of big. Play. And I really like this move. It's a very nice yeah. move. I, I use letters to comment on it in the file. But um, for instance, uh, black's game move here is probably better than the more intuitive move here. This yeah, probably, I was wondering this, about that one. That's that's sort of the natural cap, right? It, it's it's much um, it's much more difficult to slow down when White pushes through here. Um, it's it's going to be a more direct fight, and Black um, Black has less chances to dodge away from this. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the game, if White, for instance, uh, really wants to capture that stone on the left side, for instance, does does something like this, then uh, Black can <coughs> sacrifice it because Black uh. does have. Um, black has an entrance on the lower side, so like black mm -hmm. can play stuff like this to get into the left side. I mean, um, and it's not going to be a very big white territory. So black can afford to sacrifice that one stone, and when black has that plan, it's better for black to be um, on the. Uh, I guess this is the the seventh line. The seventh line, yeah. It's better yeah. for black to be way up there rather than being low uh, and right next to it, because when black does that. It's already contacting white, so it, white black has to continue with a direct move. Whereas in this case, black can it's more easy for black to sort of dodge away and get huh. into their. 
the game move is a very flexible move too. Yeah, you know, it just it really keeps a lot of options open, which is nice. Mm-hmm. And the point is that black doesn't really uh, doesn't necessarily need to save that stone on the left. Right. <clears throat> so white plays here. So this is um, getting rid of black's option to to play this move, which I was wanting to play. Once white has played here. It's a different story, obviously. So I'm a little confused, though, because it looks to me like the the white group on the left side has got some problems. I know yeah. that uh, black has that, you know, has those couple of big moves coming up in the upper side there. Mm-hmm. Why does why does white take the time to go back for the group? It seems like it's sort of playing away from the main area. Yeah, well, um, the upper side is big too, but this is. Um, it's a question of, as far as surrounding territory, the upper side is big. Yeah. But the right side is big also because this is setting up, uh, by making a strong group here, I was saying if black plays a day, locally white white B is the big move. Mm-hmm. So if white could play this way to settle the group. Mm-hmm. This is going to make an invasion towards the lower side more effective because mm-hmm. now white has a strong base on the right side, a friendly group that white can connect up to. And there's no way that black can make a split attack when white is completely alive there. Gotcha. It's also putting some pressure on black in the upper right area, because that's uh, there's still even in this even when black is pushed there on the fourth line, there is still the the uh, idea of an invasion somewhere around here, um, maybe a bit closer to the ladder, maybe a bit closer to the ladder. Let's see, um, this would be a ladder breaking move, I think, something like that. Um, wow would be troublesome. It would be troublesome because of the ladder that white can escape from and the fact that black's sto- two stones on the right are have a sort of a short zip liberties. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It would be a lot of, uh, troublesome. And so uh, this is making a big difference to black's territories, uh, potential territories also. So black jumps in. So this is nice. It is. It does have a uh, connection to the push through and cut at ABC. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but still, it's very tricky. Like even if even now in this position, it's still premature for Black to push through and cut at C, uh, because that White would just capture that one stone and get a very strong position there. So it's going to be premature until it's mature. later. It's, it's it's almost an endgame move. <laughs> and so White plays the ladder breaking move, and so we can see a direct effect of White's play on the right side. This is pretty big. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, the right yeah. side. It was looking like a big black territory. Yeah, now it's it looking was. like a white territory. Man. It's not actually a white territory, as I'm saying here, because black does have the extension at A. Mm-hmm. So black can save that stone, usually. Um, like if black plays at A, white's probably going to play something on the fourth line. That would be natural. And then black could, could escape. Otherwise, any kind of fight to capture there is probably more dangerous for white than it is for black. So I see now. So that actually, that that move I was asking about on White's part, it it really is effective because it, it, Black winds up being really pushed down. I, I was thinking of that area as a nice Black territory, but mm-hmm. not anymore. Yeah. So the effect is already yeah, it's already seen. Nice. And the fact that White has sort of made a wall of stones there on mm-hmm. the right, mm-hmm. um, this is reducing Black's potential in the center of the board also. Right. Got and it. that was that was part of the cash in that Black was hoping for you might say, in attacking white on the left. Right. But of course, black's got to continue the attack somehow because white just played away. Like, it's it's not um, not polite, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but black, black rude. just plays rude. another. It's so rude. Yeah, it's rude, yeah. Black plays again on the upper side. This is a big move. Um, and now white dives into the lower side. So you can right. see white whoa, doesn't, whoa, seem whoa, be, whoa, whoa. <laughs> doesn't seem to be very worried, does it? <laughs> no. um, and this is a point where I would be thinking maybe it's time to protect the lower left group. Yeah. Uh, be candid. And I would probably start that by pushing at A, because if white pushes at A uh, here, this uh, sort of completes the corner territory. And if black, um, black would probably answer locally. At the same time, the drawback of this play by white is that um, white is consolidating black also. So black mm-hmm. is getting a bit stronger. Um, and that would make it the perfect time for white to m- maybe play something around here. Yeah. Or, or maybe white could play something like this to start to make a living shape for the group. Sounds it would good. be easy. It would be easy to make a living shape. Sure, sure, sure. Um, if white plays first, that is. But I would start it by playing uh, playing this move, which completes the corner territory. It's a big move. Mm-hmm. So that would be what I was thinking of. 
Um, jumping in, making one more a week group was uh, it's it's pretty counterintuitive. Uh, not, but it's not, still, not, not what you were thinking of. Not quite. Yeah, but of course, <laughs> AlphaGo is not worried, um, and Black plays here. So this was actually A was a point where Black had to make a choice between playing at A and playing at C because A is setting up the connection at B. Sure. So it's extra security for the Blackstones, which are not completely uh, safe. But if Black had played C, this one. This would be putting more pressure on white on the lower side, obviously. But of course, uh, in this position, black does not have the option of connecting on the second line anymore. Hmm. Um, and the option is less, it's, 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 a, it's more troublesome. It's, it's problematic. Like, uh, it, let's just have black trying to connect. For the time being, actually, it's going to work because uh, black has this cutting point. But that just means that at some point, if, if white plays this exchange, then white's going to be able to cut black off with a potential co. Mm -hmm. um, like if, if black extends here, white can get rid of the co and then play here and cut the whole black group off. So if black's group gets into trouble, um, there's a high pr probability that it will be cut off on the second line there. Mm. So this, <coughs> this gives the black group a bit more security and um, it reduces the white group on the left to half an eye. White still has... Um, a potential eye here, white plays this way. Mm. So white still has a potential eye, but um, if black had played the other way, um, it would, it's more likely white would have an eye in sente, an eye with tempo. Mm. So there's, there's a half eye difference to white's position on the left. And the fact that black has the connection at B is extra security for black. So I, although it's a difficult choice, um, I think it makes sense that black is playing on the second line. So, I so yeah, so white plays the one space extension. And this white group is, um, it's not alive. It's its not dead, it's, it's sort of in between. Uh, white has moves like this and this that, that can uh, in, um, increase white's eye space. Like if white plays if white plays this one, white will have pretty much a, a living shape. So mm. it's some move like this and white's escape into the center that are, well, interchangeable points. And you have to remember the Black's group on the right is not 100% alive either. Yeah, yeah. So Black leaves it for now. So now Black is seriously attacking White's group. Yep. White has that one half eye on the lower side. So White has to make an eye with Sente um, in the center area. So that's what White is trying to do here. It's a kind of a distant from the, the main group, though. So you would expect White to play here. Yeah. So this is the variation that I'm going to be comparing with the game. Okay. If white plays here, um, so this is my variation. I'm going to be comparing it with what happened in the game. And we're going to see how the game is superior. Because if white plays this way, then black gets to peep here once. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, this inhibits white to a great deal and gives black stones on the left. You can see that black stones, let's mark them a bit. These three stones, the connection of these three stones is a bit loose. Um, but by um, by threatening white here, uh, black has a forcing move here. Black also has the, the connection to the corner here. In fact, black's already more, pretty much connected to the corner. So this is adding a lot of security to black on the left side. Um, white probably has to answer here. Yeah. Just to keep the pressure on black. And then black can add a stone. You can see black is fixing the shape there. The, black is fixing his shape on the left side. White still has only one eye, so White has to play the extra move here. Um, so White is alive, but Black has solved a lot of problems in the process uh, because Black's shape on the left is, is fixed now. Um, Black's last move there, um, this was to prevent White's uh, attachment at beat. So like if Black had played something like, if Black had played something like this, oh, sorry, that's the White move. Uh, if Black had played something like this, then white would have this attack here on the left. So that would be not so good for black. Mm, so that's what mm -hmm. this move is doing. It's protecting, <clears throat> um, making a fairly secure connection there. And when white plays here, now, now black always has this invasion here to look mm -hmm. at. This is, this is gonna be a bit of a headache for white. So that's an ideal attack for black. This is a very natural sequence, um, which would come, it would come to mind for, first. This would, this would be my first idea for white. That's why I made a variation of it like this. But you can see in a very natural, um, sequence of moves. Black getting the peep here is actually a very uh, vital move. It's a key point here, and the fact that White is forced to play sort of scrunched up, uh, not a very happy position. It's alive, but 
black is gained from the deck. So what happens with this is that if black answers here, now we're gonna see something very similar happen to the variation I was just showing you. So black plays, white plays here. Now white's gonna get this in with tempo and gets to play this, the vital point uh, for white. Nice sequence. And now this is pretty much alive there with a lot of cutting points in the black position. So it's a comparison of this position. Um, maybe, maybe I should do it from here. This position where white has just barely made two eyes. Right. And this position where white has uh, has not given anything up on the left side. There's there's a big difference there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so that's what white is trying to do with this stone. And and black is not allowing it when black plays here. Wow. You can see that the the two stones there they seem to be cut off from the main group. For instance, if white had played here, then it should be fairly easy for black to cut this off. Right? It's, it's mm -hmm. just cut off. Oh, yeah. It's yeah, yeah, it's just cut off. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. So white doesn't do that, but plays here. And so those two stones are not so important, actually, because the lower side black group, the black group on the lower side is not completely alive either. So black has to answer in the center. Um, if black plays a honey, yeah, black played pulled back here. So black would like to uh, try to close white in. What happens in this is that black, at this point, black has to worry about uh, white wedging there. So black will play this exchange. And it, for a moment there, it looks like black's holding it together, but mm -hmm. it's just not, it's just too many cutting points. Because white has a forcing move at A that is threatening to capture at B. Um, black's not going to be able to keep this um, holding wow, together. That is. Devilish. Mm -hmm. So black just extends. And white bumps against. Again, white is threatening to, to wedge in here. So black mm -hmm. has to uh, deal with that. And we get to this position where white has escaped into the center. But black is, it looks like black is getting some profit on the left side. Sure. So black peeps and plays here. So. Um, Suddenly, it looks like maybe black is starting to attack the lower side. Mm -hmm, but white mm -hmm. gets this peep in. Um, the proverb does tell you to peep the knight's move from the diagonal. So this mm -hmm. is the way, like, uh, peeping peeping um, here would be the, the vulgar move that would, people right. would not like. This is the better um, position. White's just getting more. Um, and in the game, black connects. But, like, if black... Um, plays this way, then white is getting two forcing moves, so it's, mm -hmm. it's better. Uh, so these old Go proverbs, they're still true, even though um, we're in a different age with the computers. That's nice to know. Nice to know they're holding up. Yeah. So white captures in the ladder, and white is sacrificing the marked stone. So if you're just a little bit greedy, uh, like I sometimes am... Um, no, no. <laughs> then you will want to save that marked stone also, instead of, of just taking because black just gets to capture that one stone. So um, I made a variation for white connecting here. Now, if black answers on the left, white can capture no ladder. But the problem is that black gets to bump against white here, and she's starting to cut right off. Uh. Um, white has to eventually answer here to stop black from cutting white off. And the three stones there, the eight stones that yeah. A, they're just mochikomi, they've been captured. Clever, 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 clever. So greed does not pay sometimes. <laughs> Strong players tend to be greedy, though. Yeah, sometimes it works too, but in this case, it would not. So uh, black has just added a stone to the group in the lower right. Mm -hmm. uh, this makes it a, a living group. Otherwise, it was not living yet. And because it's living now, now black has a, a real I can have ideas of attacking white on the lower side. Mm -hmm. But white plays this move first, and so now we have a lot of uh, sort of ambiguously weak groups all over the place. I don't think they're ambiguously weak at all. They're they're unambiguously weak. Well, not so not so weak as they were a few moments ago. Like there's um, that white corner in the upper upper left. It's it it has an invasion point at the three three point. Yeah. And from the human point of view, even a professional human like myself, I it's a problem. It's something I would be worrying about. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's why I keep wanting to play a stone uh, <laughs> a stone here. You know. It's yeah, such a do. big move. It would it would be a part of the process of getting rid of that invasion at the three three point. Right. Um, so there's this group. Let's just mark the weak groups. This one has a weakness at the three three point. Uh, White is just fix the group. It's going to be easy if you just mark the whatever group is not weak. Yeah. Oh no, <laughs> we have a limited number of weak groups now. 
Um, the A and B that I have on the diagram in the upper, upper right um, are about how white has gotten rid of the push through and cut at A. Right. And there's still a weakness at B that black is going to be looking at later. And we're going to see that in play. When white has played this move on the second line, um, it means that black's group on the outside. Although black has captured a stone there, it doesn't exactly have two eyes. So that's a potentially weak group. Uh, white's group on the lower side is weak, of course. It's not alive. Right. And, well, this group, it's sort of in between because black does have this connection on the second line. Um, but for the time being, it's not connected up to anything. So it's potentially weak. And the same can be said of this white group, which um, has no way to make two eyes now. But it does sort of have a loose connection in the center of the board. So that's just one, two, three, four weak groups. It's a, it's a low number for AlphaGo. <laughs> yeah. So black black plays at A. Um, so actually, you could say we're, we've entered the end game at this point. Wow. Uh, because um, it's a it's it's a people would differ in opinion as to whether this is the end game or not because we don't have any big areas that are going to be turning into territories. Mm -hmm. And the weak groups uh, are probably <clears throat> at this point. Um, Anyone, a professional player could play and be uh, reasonably confident that none of these weak groups would actually die. Right. Um, so you could say we're in the end game, but all of the big moves that are going to be played, um, including the one that White has played just now, uh, they have to do with potentially weak groups. Mm -hmm. So it's an end game. You could call it a fighting end game. It's an end game mm -hmm. where the players uh, have to pay attention to the groups that have two eyes and the groups that do not yet have two eyes. So that's well, what this move. Yes. Well, no, and I, I just to to bolster your argument that that because I agree that you know it's moving into end game. It's it's not so much about living and dying. It's about what is it going to cost you because mm -hmm. it's all about points now, right? Yeah. So like living with two eyes, it's painful. It's a lot of moves sure. just to make one or two points, two or three right. points maybe. Um, it's obviously a lot more convenient to to live with something like 10, 20 points. And so these big end games. Um, or attached to potentially weak groups. Um, and I've noticed when I give a teaching game, for instance, when I play with a relatively weak player, um, I will be adding stones to my weak groups. Usually if it's played with a handicap, um, naturally white will have weak groups, mm -hmm. um, unfinished groups, you might say. And so those are the groups that I play the end game moves on. And it turns out sometimes my weakest group ends up with the most territory on the board. Like, because um, I keep adding, and my opponent, if my opponent does not realize that um, he or she is supposed to attack the weak group, mm -hmm. um, and sometimes you know people hesitate to attack the group of a stronger player. Um, if that person doesn't realize that, then um, he's he's not going to attack my weak group, and I get to add a lot of stones to it. So that that's right. what the players are doing here. Basically, any strong player, um, at least any professional player, would be doing the same thing. <coughs> And now white adds a stone to the upper left corner. So, mm -hmm. um, oh yes, I, so in, in the um, commentary, I was adding black's move in the lower right too. So A, B, C, and D, these are all end game moves that have something to do with weak groups. That's what's make them big. And you can see that E is left over. Uh, e is the end game move that was not played uh, because it's adjacent to two living groups, black's two living groups, um, both the group on, well, to a certain degree, the group in the upper left, that, that's a group that could potentially get into trouble, but it's pretty much alive for the time being. Well, it's interesting because I was looking at, at E because E is the one that just so clearly is attached to, you know, black plays there and it gets a bunch of points. Right, yeah. Yeah, there's a, a real, um, a solid chunk of territory that you can mm -hmm. actually point at and see. Right. Um, to be, uh, I could clarify by saying that there's... Uh, Actually, Black, Black might be playing from this point when he plays at E. I was just trying to keep it simple. Oh, right, because of the wedge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just an extra few points. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so Black answers here. This is... Um, Black could have answered at A, but mm. uh, Black needs to play something to connect up to those two stones. You can see that Black is uh, threatening White in the center just a little bit. And because Black has played these moves on the right here, these, uh, let's mark these three moves. Uh, because Black has played this on the right, again, uh, White's group on the on the right side of the board is not 100% alive either. Uh, it needs one more move to make a territory there on the right side. Mm. So uh, Black is threatening uh, a three-way 
three-pronged attack against whites group on the left, and whites group on the lower side is not 100% yet, and whites group on the right, although it's okay. With such a long wall, it's going to be okay, but um, combined with the two other attacks, maybe black's going to eventually get an attack on white on the right mm -hmm. side too. So it's about time for white to do something about that. So white adds a stone to the lower side. Um, and now that's alive. Yep. And um, so efficient. So, yeah. And it's, it, it's not a, a t attacking black on the lower in the lower right, but it is um, sort of cutting off black's group in the center. So there is some potential that whites. Uh, the potential really is that at some point white would like to take away the eyes of this group on the lower side and force black to play something like this, because this would right. be a relatively small endgame move. Right. So black plays here on attacking the corner, white answers, uh, and now black jumps in. So like this is where, um, <coughs> again, to talk about my teaching game, this is where my opponent would get really aggravated if I did something like that, because you know, yeah. Um, yeah, we, my we opponent were. would say, that's my territory. <laughs> well, you just you just made me play the other move here, and then you right, jumped. Yeah. You, you the gave moment white protects it, yes. <laughs> um, so black, this is a probe. Um, there are various ways white can handle it. And actually, it's very um, educational, the way that a, uh, AlphaGo does it. Uh, because just to go through, this is uh, a move that would be one way. Let's just make some, um, just like this would be the textbook way of, um, that works <coughs> almost always. But in this case, <coughs> black gets to reduce the white territory. So this would be giving black a huge end game move <coughs> in return for um, saving the corner. So this is um, a very good result for black. Black's getting a lot extra on the, on the left side. Unlike if black then continues to do this, we can see that that's a finished territory there on the left side. So this is just very good for black. So that would be what looks like a safe move. It's not so good in this case. If white plays here, now this is a more aggressive way of trying to take black from the outside, a very feasible move locally. And for the time being, black is just going to play. If black plays in the area, this is the move I expect. And after playing at A, now black has a threat of playing at B. It's going to turn into a fight to capture the corner. And although black will lose that fight, probably, white is going to be forced to put a lot of stones in. So the idea is to use that 3-3 invasion as a sacrifice um, to force white to put a lot of stones inside the tomb. Mm. And in the process, black is going to get um, all of these points uh, on the outside around here. If black gets to play uh, these kind of moves, you can see that black's going to get each move that black plays on the outside is going to add to black's territory. So that's the idea, and it's a very um, it's a very effective move, just because this is white's territory. Like it would be less effective if this was not a white territory. It's effective mm -hmm. because it's a white territory anyway, and black can afford to die in the corner. It doesn't matter. It's dead already. As you say, yeah, it's dead already. So, yeah. so white doesn't even answer it. it, it white does not uh, directly answer it. Um, this move is a very effective move for white because white, as we will see, white is making an eye here. And making an eye here is going to uh, give white uh, the extra strength that white doesn't really have to worry about what happens in the corner. I'm talking about AlphaGo worrying it, but anyway. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, what, what that's the idea. So black answers, well, black didn't answer, I'm sorry. Pretty soon black's going to answer that. But the idea is that white is going to be alive whatever black does, and it's not going to matter whether black lives in the corner or not. Because wow. if white had played one of these moves, or one of these moves, then uh, more likely than not, white, black would have been got a lot, getting a lot of forcing moves from outside, and white's territory would have been something like 10 points anyway. So like maybe the outside moves are more important. That's the idea, idea behind this. I see. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so now black would... This obviously it's adding um, adding some security to the black group on the lower side, and um, putting some pressure on white on the right side mm -hmm. and the lower side. Yes, so white takes the territory move. Obviously, this is alive now. So black continues in the upper left, and again white plays towards the center. So you can see white is actually putting a bit of pressure on the surrounding black group because black needs to eventually connect at D. So black plays here, 
And there's that uh, pretty little eye there. Um, white already has that one eye secured. So that's one eye. And you can see white's pretty close to getting a second eye here. So already white's group is fairly safe. Um, and this is important because it's actually pretty unusual that white can handle the 3-3 invasion by making a living group on the outside. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's very skillful you done, you might say. It's very clever of white to be able to get a position that is going to be very difficult for black to attack. Well, and not only that, but in one of those variations you were showing that, you know, black attacking was going to pick up, look like maybe four or five points right in the area where... Right in this area where white has made that eye. These three yeah. stones are blocking that territory that black wanted to make. Pretty so nice. very effective. And white gets to play this move on the left side. Now, this this is sort of connected to what's happening in the upper left corner. It's... it's adding to um, the counterattack. Now, if black plays here, this is the, the fun part. Now, if black plays here, white's reduced to, to one eye. Um, and this is the variation that I made. This is not the game variation. Um, black's actually going to be able to live in the corner. Uh, no. there's, still a, uh, oh. there's still a code there at B. Um, a code there that white is not going to play in the near future. Um, so we can say this corner is alive, more or less. Uh -huh. But white's uh, gaining more on the upper side. Uh, like, uh, if black plays here, white's going to push through and cut. It's not going to work. So uh, black has to be pretty... Um, black has to be pretty... Uh, well, even if we have it like this. Black's not going to oh, get into nice. the upper side. Nice, nice, side nice, nice. white territory. That's right. Wow, cool. And so black's not going to be able to get into the upper side after white plays this. White's getting a lot of territory back. And, and as I was saying, the corner was going to be, if White had just defended and defended and defended, it would have been something like 10 points. 10 points, so 10 points, yeah, the yeah. upper side is bigger. So like, that's, yeah, that's, like the, that's that. the final line. The, the upper side is bigger. Wow. Um, so flexible. And so White doesn't have to kill the corner. And so that was that variation, although Black lived in the corner, this is a success for White. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. And so... It, so that's my explanation of all of those moves white played in upper left. Um, and I have a warning for people who want to emulate that. that it's pretty <laughs> tricky to do an actual practice. But the, um, the idea there is very important, though, I think. Yeah. Well, the flexibility, the fle because, I mean, I think your, your point is really, really important, especially for us amateur players, because, you know, the instinct is that, wait a minute, that corner, I played all these moves, that yeah, corner, it's fine, you know? my corner... Yeah, don't come I'm in. Gonna, I'm going to defend it to the death, and I have you know so many times you know I got my ten points. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That, that's the natural reaction I think, just because mm -hmm. White's played so many, played something like four or five moves there to protect the corner. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's Black doing coming in there? Get upset. <laughs> and so this is the game variation. So instead, Black uh, played this move in the center. So this move in the center, again, Black is threatening White, White's group on the left. So this move, actually, it has to do with three blue groups, because black <clears throat> group on the left there, I've marked the black group on the left, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, which does not have a clear two-eye position. So that's not 100% alive. And the group on the right is still has potential of losing its eyes. For instance, like if white plays something like this at some point, black's going to be connecting on the, on the second and first line. So it's not as if black has a lot of eyes there. Mm. Uh, eventually, white can take away some of those eyes here. Mm -hmm, so... Mm -hmm. um, so this move has to do with that group also. And obviously it has to do with the, the marked white group in the center because that mm. group does not have two eyes. White, um, maybe white has a way of making two eyes, but it would be very painful. It would again be just two or three points. Mm. So white connects here and jumps out. And that extra liberty there, um, connecting here is a move that white wanted to play at some point because it gives that, that extra liberty, uh, the extra liberty here. Uh, when I looked into the variations in the corner, that extra liberty had something to do with some of them. So it, it, that's an extra getting two liberties there. Uh, the dominant points it might look um, like it doesn't it's trivial or something, but it actually does have some. In some of the variations, it makes a difference. Okay. So black plays thickly in the center. Um, this move again, it's reinforcing the neighboring black groups, but mm. also it's getting rid of uh, a way for white to connect to the upper upper right. So it's putting pressure on White's group in the center, and it's going to have something to do with Black's attack here that's coming pretty soon. 
Mm-hmm. I've been wondering about that. It just seems like with that uh, black wall, that can go pretty far, right? Right. But white has no choice but to protect it, B. So that, that's the, the game move that white just played is B. Right. Okay. So all of those marked groups are alive. Uh, blacks, let's see, I've marked some black groups. Um, again, white B, which is the move that white just played here. Let's play it mm-hmm. again. Um, so this affects all of the marked groups is what I'm saying here. Um, and the marked group, the, the black group on the lower side is the one that is affected most because it doesn't have a clear connection to the marked group in the lower right. It means that there's some potential that white could squeeze it just a little bit. Mm-hmm. Although it's not in immediate danger, it, there is some potential there for white to squeeze it just a little bit. Okay. But this is by far the largest one. Wow. And so you see that upper left corner uh, invasion. Uh, at this point, no one knows whether it's alive or dead. Mm. It depends on how, how, how much black wants to, do, to give up to, to make it live. So like black could have played this variation again. Mm-hmm. And it would have lived, but um, it's not worth it. So for the time being, Black is just leaving that behind. And it's, it's, it's not even going to try to save that stone. Mm-hmm. But it does have something to do with what happens on the upper side. So in that variation, I was showing you white getting into the upper side like this. So if the position on the upper side changes significantly, then that's going to change what happens in the corner. Okay. It's, it's going to make Black's, Black's uh, attack here crawling here to make it more, more, um, more potent. Right. So white invades. So all of this has to do uh, with the forcing move here on the first line, which white needs to handle the corner. We, can, we saw that happening in the variation here. Let's just go through that variation once more. When white black plays, when black plays this move, um, it's basically making Miai of connecting on the first line and covering in the corner. So the, the value of this honey here is very important. Like if white had played something like this, then white would have a stronger attack against black in the corner, uh, but still would not be able to, white would have to worry about a, a fight to capture. It would probably be something like a ko anyway. Mm-hmm. And so the value of this honey here is very important. It has to remain being a valuable move. And so that's what we are, we're seeing happening here when black plays here, trying to, um, change the position on the upper side. It's also a very big move, but white invading here, which locally, this is an overplay. It's not going to work as it is, uh, but it has to do with that mark point being forced. Yeah, okay. So black attaches on the top, and white plays. Um, this is also, there's a proverb for this one. You don't um, push through the knight's move. You don't push through and cut. Tsukekoshi kirubeka. So that when black plays the tsukekoshi, which is an attachment against the knight's move, um, it's good, Suji, not to, to push through and cut, which would be this move. Um, right. So just to show you how that happens, we're going to go into this uh, variation, which for the time being, it looks almost like white's going to win the semi. Does. But black has this move on the second line, which is going to uh, change. Uh, oh, I think I see this. I think yeah. I, yeah. So if white, uh, white, basically white has to connect here. Like if white plays something like this, this is just going to make it worse. Yep, 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 yep. Um, so white uh, connects here. Uh, or if white plays uh, this way, black will just pull back and get this incentive because white has to connect anyway. So I have white connecting here, and black will squeeze yeah, in the center. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is threatening the cut here for the time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So white answers. And in this process, black is um, settling the position on the on the left. And because of that stone at A, there's no way for white to squeeze. Because like if white played this way, black would just connect underneath. That would be mm. terrible. Yeah, if yeah, white yeah. plays this way, uh, there's no way to connect up because of that black stone there. And black is already re- winning. Black can leave it now and has won the semi-art. Wow. wow. Just, this stone is, is working over time, you might say. Mm-hmm, it's it's mm-hmm. working a lot. It's beautiful. Yeah. So that's the idea here. Um, this move, this is the vital move that wins the semi for black. Yeah, it's brilliant. And so white plays here and black plays here. And it's still the same story. For instance, if white plays here, this would still be a semi. And again, uh, attaching on the second line is going to be the key move. It's going to be the vital move that wow. gives black a huge advantage. So this is interesting because this no longer feels like endgame. Now this feels like we're back into middle game fighting. It's, it's a bit of a fight. Um, but um, 
as I was saying, locally it's an overplay for white, but um, there's meaning in it because this move is still going to be forcing. White's ah. creating a position that is not really working locally, mm. but it's, it's making this move a forcing move for white. So white just backs up. Um, it was necessary for white to back up just to get rid of that attack that black had. And in this position, now the corner, the upper left corner is okay because mm. white has that forcing move at, at the mark point. Um, so it's really interesting how white played what was locally a bad variation in invading mm -hmm. on the upper side. It just wasn't working, but it has, has an effect on what, what happens in the upper left corner. Mm. And so we're back to end game moves, uh, but A, I really like this move at A. Uh, it just looks like a mundane move, but um, there's a meaning to it because um, when black continues this way, this is the strongest attack that black has against white on the lower side. Like a move like this would be very easy for white to deal with. It's no problem. Mm. Um, it would just be a normal end. It's much better for black to play this and play the Hane getting a cut here, putting a lot more pressure on white. Um, and so eventually, like for instance, if, if we have white capturing the one stone and black playing here, you can, <coughs> you can see that uh, the white group is gonna live maybe uh, by eventually playing this move, um, but it's gonna be painful. So that's the idea that black has here. Black is squeezing white. And the point is that this exchange here, um, the, or, the game move order is the only order in which it would have been forcing. Because mm -hmm. going back to this point, uh, when black pushes through here, black is uh, looking at this peep here. It's a very uh, threatening move. There's a direct threat to peep here. Right. So white has to answer that. Um, after playing this exchange, let's just go back and make that variation. <laughs> if, black had started, if black had started from here, they would look very similar. But this would no longer be a forcing move. White might play on this side. Or if white is if, if white is already settled, then of course white will save the one stone. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Whereas in the game, black always has the option of capturing that one stone right. at this point. At this point, black always has the option of cutting there on the fourth line. I'm sorry, the fifth line. Um, so that A and B is a very important point. Again, to go back um, to this one. No, not that one. Uh, let's see. Yes, this one. And this variation, um, playing that point for white can sometimes be a vital point, like um, playing this point, uh, because it does have an effect on black's connection in the center, and white is building an eye. White is building an eye here. So it, it's a point that at some point white might want to play. Uh, but if black starts, uh, from this order of moves, then Black's never going to have a chance to play it. So it's very important that Black plays it <clears throat> at this point. It was very well-timed, threatening the peep, the mark peep. Black. White covered, and then Black played here. Mm -hmm. So the order of moves here, um, very easy to ignore, you might say, but um, it's very important to have that exchange of mm -hmm. A and B. <clears throat> So white played uh, played away against this. Instead of capturing the uh, one stone, white played. This is a big move too, I guess. And so black captures the two stones. Uh, with this, white is ensured of being able to get an eye here. At the, if white plays at the mark point, white can get an eye there. Mm. Um, so white just continues in the lower right. So white has an eye at A and can get a second eye at B or C. So white's alive. But I, I really like the way that black attacked there. And now black continues um, there. This is a big move, connects all the black groups. Um, and white finally takes the corner. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this is the move that black was setting up there. This is probably the last exciting variation. Uh, this move that black played here, um, it looked like it was sort of a defensive move, but it was setting up this attack here. So the idea behind this move is that if white connects, Black can actually cut off the, the two groups. Oh. Uh, so black is uh, threatening the center group <coughs> and white's group on the right side. <coughs> and I don't think white's going to die in the center, but it's it's going to take some, it's, it's not going to be easy, you might say. It's going to be mm -hmm. a difficult fight. For mm -hmm. So 
Um, so white answered here, this is a very clever move. And white's going to sacrifice a little bit on the right and is going to connect up in the center. So black wedges here. Again, this is one of the um, one of the advantages of playing here. So it's not as if black was playing a dame point. There are some real points attached to that move there. And then pushes through. And we can see white is squeezing, uh, squeezing to get. And you know, it, it makes it difficult because AlphaGo uh, plays with the mood or move order a bit and it plays away sometimes. But you can see that black has got, now black plays B on the upper side. Mm. So black has gotten a lot of uh, profit out of the attack. It's really nice end game. Mm -hmm. And so the game continues here, let's see. Um, this is a pretty straightforward, it's turning into a fairly straightforward end game. They're both playing big moves. Um, black actually gets to cut white off here. Mm -hmm. But of course, it's no problem because white can connect up. So it's interesting how the U.S. So, switches back and forth. Yeah, so reasonable now. Yeah, and and there's some danger points, but it, it all cleans up fairly easily. And so they're just playing the big moves. I could find nothing wrong with endgame. Uh, I would be surprised. But then you see it's interesting. Wait, 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 wait. Black wait, goes wait. back to that for the Yeah, what, what, what happened there? Well, white has only the one eye. So black is still trying. And of course, the problem with this move is it's not 100% forcing. Even if white plays away, uh, white's still going to be able to kill the black group. So, uh, why, so, so why play it? Uh, well, uh, why play it, you say. Black's going to try to make white play some extra moves inside the white territory. So it's, it's worth a certain number of points, which is very hard to calculate. For me. <laughs> um, but there is some added value there. It's, it's going to force white to put a stone, uh, a number of stones inside. Well, well, but let me ask you this. So from an amateur perspective, right, I can see a lot of reasons to play that, including the fact that, especially at this point, probably somebody is probably in time trouble. Mm -hmm. And that could be really valuable. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you mean as far as winning the game? Yes, there is that factor, yes. Just, um, just saying. Provided white cannot make two eyes somehow, um, there's no way that this. It, you can pretty much count on this move having some some value. Okay. But the All point right. I was the point I was going to make is a bit different because um, the timing of these moves is very important. Yeah. And so the important information <clears throat> here is that it, that black did not play it until now. Black waited until the end game moves were small. Uh. Uh, so. It, it, it wasn't big enough to play like when there were um, ten point moves all over the place. Because, because it's not hundred. Because, this, well, because, now, not because what you were saying, it's not hundred percent cent. It's not hundred percent cent. Right. So white played a peep here, but eventually black, white did go back into to the corner. Okay. And with this move, it looks like white's go going to escape uh, from having to put a lot of stones in. But the way they handle this corner is, it's really. Uh, you're going to be a bit surprised by some of the shapes that you see here. And it's, it's sort of interesting. So let's just go through the game. Otherwise, yeah. this would be a fairly straightforward end game. But what the stuff that's going to happen in the upper left corner is going to make it a bit more exciting. So black plays here. You can see that black is still trying to put pressure on the white. Right, group. right. Um, they're playing big. Okay, so wait, wait, it's wait, actually wait. effective for black to start with this move. This is a really weird shape. But black is um, putting pressure on the white group, white, taking away the eye. And uh, uh, the point okay. is that when white is going <laughs> to try to capture black's group, white has to play all of these, you might call them dame points. They're useless points. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if black can get a position where white is forced to fill all of those points, it's going to be a lot of white moves that uh, are forced to be played. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the, the plan that you could say black has. So white uh, plays there. Now that's another fancy move. Now this is white. You can see that white is aiming at the two two point, the B eighteen. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. I was trying to figure out how to get there. Mm -hmm. And if black plays there, then white can just extend here, and that's a yeah. Um yeah. The idea is that white has to keep black. If white can stop black from making an eye in the corner, right? Then uh, it will be an eye against no eye, and, and white will not have to add a lot of stones there. Oh, tell people how is that in Japanese? I it's um, me, I, 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 so nice. me, yeah, I, yeah. me, me means I. 
Right. So may is the I part, and Adi is to, to be, and Nasi is not to be. That's great. Uh, I love they don't, that. They don't do the things with the to be verb that uh, we do in English, but it's pretty similar. How does, I wonder how Shakespeare works then. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's a completely different word. They need a completely different phrase to, to, to express that. Oh, okay. So, so Hamlet, Hamlet was not a go player then. Well, uh, not a go player, no. <laughs> so this is a really neat player. Uh, again, they say that the two, the one two point is the key point in the corner, mm -hmm. and it's working here. So if white extends here, black's going to play. Uh, maybe black's going to play here. Black could even play once here first, actually. Black could play all of these moves just to keep. Ooh, uh, ooh, so this this would yeah. obviously. Uh, I don't know if I played the ideal sequence, but if white. Um, Place this move now, it's going to be a code. So it would be a disaster. Oh my uh, God. And white can kill it with this move, but you can see that black has an eye now in the corner. Yeah. So this this should be a bit troublesome for white. Uh, um, but I, I did make a mistake there. So let's just go back. Black's not going to play all those moves. Black's just going to play here. <coughs> wow. Yeah. So this shape, again, you can see that the fact that white is going to eventually have to fill all of these points. Yeah, it's, it's really a bit annoying. It's going to be annoying, yeah. Something oh, like that. Man. Maybe not this one, but white's, white's going to be playing a lot of moves in there. And although black played first, you can see that white's going to be playing more moves than black inside that territory. So, so annoying. Yeah, so that's that's how the work move could work for black. And so that's what white is doing here, but it's not simple because black gets to throw in. And AlphaGo is going to be showing this to us in bits and pieces because sometimes it plays away. But there's something happening here in the upper left corner. So they, otherwise, they're just playing big in-game moves. But the, every so often, AlphaGo gets back to the corner here. And you can see White's not going to be able to connect those four songs. No, I, I'm trying to work. This looks like one of these devilish uh, Sumego problems where you let them take it, and then you play into the middle of it. And, right. Yeah, it, it, we have to wait a bit. But yeah, eventually, AlphaGo is going to show that to us. So Black takes, White jumps in. Right, right, right. And... It looks like white messed up or something. It does. But actually, the fact that uh, this shape is less liberties <laughs> for black. Black has less liberties than it's before. It's got a big eye. It's got a really it's a big eye. Uh, we're going to see it happen. Big butt eye. It's less liberties. Let's just make it in a variation uh, for now. Sure, um, you're right. But damn it. When black see. plays here and white plays here, it's just these three points. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. And at some point, Black is going to be uh, playing an Atari at this point, too. Okay. And uh, White's not going to connect. White's going to play it as a co. So White's going to be very efficient in capturing the Black stones. Um, basically, uh, let's just do it in very... Black will play here. White will play here. They're going to be fighting this co. Yeah. Uh, there's very little point for Black to be connecting the co. So this co is going to uh, stay there, uh, for instance, in a position like this. It's just going to sit there, and eventually White's going to just play these moves. So it's just these two moves that White has to play. So to go back to this position, up to this point, the players have been playing in turns. The players have been playing in turns. Uh, White only needs two more moves to finish off the black. Mm -hmm. So it only took two moves. Whereas in that variation I was showing you before, let's see if I can find it. <coughs> Look at all those moves that White has to play. So it's a big difference. One, two, three, four, five. Wow, that's three more moves. Wow. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Um, yeah. So so that's that's the. Oh, let, uh, I think. Let's see. <coughs> so here we are in the end game. Um, and. Oh yeah. So this is a keep. I've, I've jumped ahead a little bit. So let's go back. <coughs> so this is how they dealt with it, and it's, it's a very clever way for White to deal with the situation. Giving black what looks like a big eye, but it's actually less liberties, as I was showing you. Never would have come up with that in a million years. <laughs> and so we're going to see what happens in the end, because it's sort of interesting. Um, black, you can see that black played this connection on the first line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Black played the connection on the first line. White ignored it. Um, and as I was saying, if white plays here, White can deal with it with only two extra moves. Right. If Black had not played that move, though, then White would have been able to finish it up with just one move. So there's a one-move difference there. Right? 
yeah, yeah, it's one yeah. less. Would, if, white, yeah. if white gets to this corner first, it's one right. less. Right. When black gets here first, uh, and white answers, it's going to be an extra move. So that's that's a that's worth a point for black, a point or two, right. Right. maybe two right. points. Um, so that's um, that's the reason that black played this move. White black had a good reason to play that move. White plays away. Now black's going to, for instance, black can connect here. Now white's going to have to be playing. Black has just played two moves in a row, but now white has to play six moves. So that's four moves. Four, six minus two, right? So it's it's a lot. It's a it's worth about three points. That two or three amazing. points. Amazing. That's crazy. Um, and there's a little bit that black gets from the squeeze from outside, but you can see most of these points are going to be uh, the points like these. These two are going to be dummy points, so they're not right. worth that much. But I think black gains about three points in this variation locally. Uh, but the point is, white has enough outside liberties that um, it's not a direct danger. White right. can play away. I think I actually did the variation where white plays away. Black gets to squeeze a little bit, but white's going to win the semi by one move, of course. That's the way. Hmm. That's a Google calculating ability. And that move that white played at B is a huge move. That's like, it's about four points. Wow. So that was a big move that white was threatening to play. So um, really interesting how the life and death, where a human player would be really worried and want to play here immediately, yes. the way AlphaGo just doesn't care. <laughs> and, and, it, and it's not, and it's, a, it's the same result. I think white won by, oh, it's been so a while since I made this, uh, this uh, the SGF, but I think it was a half point, a quarter of a stone for white, yeah. if I recall correctly. And and so I looked into this variation and the game variation. I was getting um, the same result, so it didn't seem to make any difference. They were both both this move, and white's going to put a stone in now. This move, they're the same size. Those two end game moves. Okay. Uh, but it, it's really um, a human player. I think gets anxious a little bit when. Yeah. Uh, when like the, uh, the end game moves have to do with the life or death of a group. It, well, um, but I mean, also part of it is that we have an issue that we have to deal with that the that the AI really doesn't, which is you know our our. Um, I mean, besides the fact that we're probably tired at this point. Yeah, tired. Um, uh, but and there is and the time, time control. The time, yeah. the time issue. Yeah, the yeah. time control. There's the issue with that, and the fact that we don't calculate as fast as a computer does. Right. Right. Especially a Google supercomputer tends to calculate faster than a human being. You think? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> and so this is how the, you can see that white uh, has enough outside liberties and sufficient um, co-threats. Like if black had a ton of co-threats, this would be a problem for black. Yeah. It was sure. interesting. I was going through the game with Leela, uh, the computer program. Sure, sure. And the value, the score of the players, it oscillated. It, it went up and down quite uh, quite a good deal, which is very unusual. But I, I think that this co here, um, it was thinking it was more serious. Right. Maybe. Uh, of course, it's a half point game, so I don't know. Maybe it was thinking that Black had a chance to win by half a point. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as I could see, that the, the um, Lila was wrong when it thought that Black had chances here. And so I think the co here could be um, some kind of a bug maybe in the program. Mm. But white does have enough co-threats to win. And at the end, um, Leela did decide that white is winning. Um, but you know, those percentages that the computer programs give us are not much help, help because um, it's giving something like <clears throat> 90 so percent when uh, actually white is just winning by half a point. And like a human player like myself would not feel that this was an easy win for white when it's just a half point difference. Well, yeah, I was thinking about uh, this AI issue recently because of the stuff with the uh, with the with the Boeing planes, mm -hmm. where, where they it, it turns out. I mean, they're still investigating it, but it you know it's this program that they put in there to deal with, and it's a kind of a complex problem. But essentially, it's something that to to deal with the fact that they moved the engines around, they had to put this thing in that that you know puts the nose down, and the problem is is that. You know, it puts the nose down. The pilot knows this is wrong, and puts the nose up. And the computer says, and, "You know, the, and, and yeah. it just—it was reminding me of AlphaGo, which is 
you know, it's very correct on this local level, right? Because, you know, according to the, the AI in the plane, this is a problem. And so it just keeps correcting. And that's why when they look at the data, it's up. I was just thinking about what you were saying, because it's up, down, up, down, up, down. And then it has, of course, disastrous con you know, consequences. And it's fascinating because, you know, in in the AlphaGo thing, it's it's, mm -hmm. it's just a game. But when right. you start putting these AIs into mm -hmm. real life circumstances, um, mm -hmm. it, it gets really interesting and, and potentially fatal, obviously. Yeah, I agree. Um, of course, in the ca case of Go, um, quite often we find that it's correct. Like, I think Leela has these problems, obviously, with ladders. Yeah. And may yeah. maybe with this Go here, I'm not so sure about that because it was a half point difference. Mm -hmm. um, but um, that was uh, that was not a problem with AlphaGo, actually. AlphaGo was, I, I think it was the superior computer, um, the hardware. Uh, right, the supercomputer made the difference there, and it, it complete it had no problem with calculating ladders, as far as I could tell. Um, yeah, when I played Lisa at all, I I had the feeling that it was avoiding codes. Um, the the uh, the team didn't really agree with me, I don't think, but um, mm -hmm. I had the feeling it was it was avoiding complicated code positions, mm -hmm. but it was winning anyway. But so that that could be a factor. Right, right. So it winds up being uh, half a point for white, yeah? Yeah, a quarter of a stone. When white wins by half a point and you change to the stone counting uh, system, it's usually a quarter of a point. Mm -hmm. uh, quick question before I mean, we wrap. a quarter of a stone. Excuse quarter of a stone, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just before we wrap up, um, you, you recently did some live commentaries on a really interesting uh, match, and I just thought a little bonus for our viewers. Uh, do you want to talk about I me? Mean, it's a, it's a, oh, it's yeah, a the World Championship match. And we don't we don't really know that much about that match. It's been going for a few years now, right? It's uh, yeah, I think for four or five years almost. Mm -hmm. It's a very exciting uh, match between the top players of Japan and Korea and China. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it was KJ, of course, right. um, and two other uh, top Chinese players, and uh, it was Park uh, Jongwang, who's probably the strongest player in the world. He was the mm -hmm. winner this time. And um, Yun Chang Hyoku, actually. Um, mm -hmm. He was a past world champion, uh, maybe not so prominent recently. He's close to my age, I think. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, there was actually a preliminary tournament. So there was a, tor a knockout tournament um, to add three people to the eight people who played in this tournament. I saw that, and I didn't, I didn't uh, you know, it's my own ignorance, but I wasn't familiar with the folks that got sort of seated in. Uh, they were, well, Yoon chang Hyuk was a famous player. He was one of the top players in Korea right. in the era of Lee chang -ho. And mm -hmm. so he had a lot of trouble beating Lee chang -ho, but he did win um, some of the world championships. Like there was mm -hmm. a lot of, there were world championships like the um, Dongyang Championship, the Dongyang right. Securities Cup. And right. There was the Fujitsu, and that uh, in that time period, um, he would he won a few of the world championships. That's so he so was a prominent Korean player. Um, he's middle aged now. Um, there was a, a period when he was um, unofficial in the Korean uh, organization. Mm -hmm. So he, there was a, a period where he was sort of maybe a bit more distant from actually playing golf. What's Although the he's uh, probably persistent. What's the format for the tournament? Uh, so uh, there are five seated players, like there was Yama um, and Cho U from Japan, mm. and uh, about two players each. Like there were five five of them from the three uh, go playing China, Korea, and, and Japan. Mm -hmm. And then there were uh, there were three slots left over, and there was a an elimination tournament mm. um, that started in each country. And then uh, they combined them. So the, the mm -hmm. final stages of that tournament were played um, with players from all three countries. Um, and I think Korea got both of the slots, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't really yeah. remember. No, I think that's right. Yeah. Um, um, and then it's just a, um, an elimination tournament with eight players. There. Okay. And, um, and, part, and before that, uh, this was the first year that they did this uh, preliminary elimination tournament. Mm -hmm. um, before that, it was just seated players. Actually, the first year they did it, um, it was the Japanese program, Zen, which um, was still active. It's not active right now, but it was still active, and it was stronger than professionals in general. 
And so it was just four players, one player from each country, one player from Japan, uh, I believe it was Iyama, mm -hmm. and, uh, and a Korean player and a Chinese player. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the computer program. So it was four players and they played, uh, I think they decided all of the places, so they played uh, two games. Um, I think they played all of each other. So I, 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 it was a round robin league. A round robin, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then after that, um, I think it changed to a elimination tournament and they didn't have Zen after a while, but, um, it was chosen players. It was a, um, a selected group of players until this year when they, uh, now they've included a uh, preliminary. Well, we, uh, we'll, we'll include a link. Uh, folks should go check out your commentaries, but did you have any sort of general comments? And I guess I'm specifically wondering... <laughs> Did you did you see any AI influenced uh, play? Any, did oh, definitely. Comments in, yeah. yeah, all of the three three invasions, and you know we've taken those three three Joseki further. Like there's there's a lot of um, in in the Korean the games played by Park Jong Um He was on both sides of a very complicated fight that involves the three three point invasion Joseki. Um, mm -hmm. So there's this Joseki variation there. Um, that uh, gets into a, a huge fight. And in the game between uh, Park jong Wang and who was he playing? He was playing another Korean player in, I think it was the second round. Um, they played <coughs> what, a, a variation that is pretty close to what we call the Joseki mm -hmm. at this point. And for, for the time being, it, it's what we call, call the Joseki. Mm -hmm. But then when he played KJ, he was playing the other side. And it... As far as I know, he played a new move. It was a move that I had not seen before. Wow. And so we're, it, it's, it was very exciting in that way. Mm -hmm. um, KJ, maybe he had his best game of the whole tournament in the final against mm -hmm. uh, Park. But uh, in the end, he lost it. Wow. Um, actually, he, he played a, a bad game. Well, Cho played a good game against KJ. Okay. Um, and could have won, but um, it didn't turn out that way. That, so it was interesting. There was a lot of um, games that got turned around towards the end. The, the last thing was just, you know, you do a fair amount of, of commentaries, you know, for, for Japan, but this was doing your know, commentaries in, in English. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, um, this is an, an international tournament. It's sponsored from Japan mostly, I think. Um, but uh, I think that people are starting to see the importance of giving English contents. Mm -hmm, and it turns mm -hmm. out that um, while there is a Japanese, and, and this was um, broadcast on the net, obviously, so mm -hmm. people can um, see it. Um, and there was a Japanese commentary also. But it turns out, I think the English commentary was more popular. And that's because um, there are people from all over. It's, it's a larger audience to start with. Um, so I think that um, just because... Uh, the most prominent players were Chinese and Korean. I think we're, uh, we had a lot of Asian people mm -hmm. watching the game. And, and um, the language of choice for them would probably be English because some of them wouldn't speak English, uh, Japanese, that is. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So it feels, it feels like you know, the fact that, and you and I talked about that when you were here last year, uh, that, that, that uh, some of the broadcasters were looking at doing that. And, and I just think that's a really, you know, exciting move. It feels uh, like it really, I mean, Go has obviously been a global game in, in some ways for a long time, but, you know, doing English broadcasts of a major tournament like that, that, that seems like a big step. Yeah, I think that it will um, continue. Um, I think that as the sponsors see that they're getting a bigger audience with the English contents, they're, they're mm -hmm. going to um, get more interested and in, in continue doing it. Because um, until now, there's been a problem with doing Japanese sponsored tournaments on the net uh, because there's the, there's a copyright issue that makes it very difficult for me to right. uh, do it on my own. So it, it's a lot of help that not only do I get paid to do it when I have a sponsor, um, but I don't get into trouble with them. So, <laughs> <laughs> so there's That's a double move. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a double profit there. So um, right. there, it's a, a move in the right direction. It, it'll make it much more easy if this continues. It'll make it easier for me to um, show you Japanese games and uh, the Japanese yeah. games are interesting well, too. Exciting stuff and folks should definitely check those games out. Thank you as always, Michael. Great to see you. Thanks, of course. 
to our wonderful AGA members. They make these videos and so much more possible. And just a reminder, uh, if you'd like to support this content, and we hope that you do, please consider joining the AGA. Uh, it's the American Go Association. Just go to usgo.org. Just take a couple minutes. We appreciate the support. Thanks so much, and we'll see you all next week.